Income tax 2023-2024. Listed property. Do the passenger automobile limits apply? Get ready and some coffee because we're laying down the facts about income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Most of this information can be found in Publication 946, How to Depreciate Property, Section 179, Deduction, Special Depreciation Allowance, Makers Listed Property, and more, Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax, Tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. The sole proprietorship schedule C rolling into line one income of the formula. Noting that the schedule C itself is another income statement basically having business income minus business expenses which you could call business deductions giving, in essence, net business income, which is what rolls from the Schedule C to line one of the income tax formula. This formula outlining basically the calculation on the Form 1040, of which we see the first page here, Schedule C ultimately rolling into line number eight. Additional income from Schedule 1. This is the Schedule 1. Additional income and adjustments to income. Part number 1. Additional income. Schedule C rolling into line 3. Business income or loss. This is the Schedule C. Profit or loss from business. Having a P&L. Profit and loss or income statement format being income minus expenses. We're looking at the expenses typically having the most different kind of categories within it, some expenses being more difficult to calculate than others, like depreciation, where even if we're on a cash-based system, as we've seen in prior presentations, the tax code will typically force us to do an accrual thing. For example, if we had that $10,000 piece of equipment, we would like to just expense it up front because one, that's the easy thing to do, and two, it would give us the most amount of depreciation as soon as possible, maximizing the deduct deduction as quick as we can. But the tax code will usually force us to put it on the books as an asset, which is difficult because all we have is a profit and loss on the Schedule C. Therefore, we need another form, such as a depreciation schedule recording the balance sheet asset accounts of uh, property, plant, and equipment, and contra asset account accumulated depreciation, as well as the expense calculation for depreciation expense in the current period. So note that the tax code will typically kind of follow generally accepted accounting principles to some degree that makes sense from generally accepted accounting principles and then deviate from those principles for political reasons or whatever other reasons, such as with the 179 deduction and special depreciation, which possibly could allow you to deduct all or most of, for example, the $10,000 in the year of purchase which leads to the question of why didn't you just let me stay in a cash-based system in the first place and just expense it as the equipment expense. And obviously the reason is because the tax code is trying to follow generally accepted accounting principles and then make adjustments because of politics and whatnot. You would think the 179 deduction and the special deduction are things that will change more often over time 
given the fact that those aren't in alignment with generally accepted accounting concepts, accrual concepts, whereas the maker's depreciation in essence is. We've been looking at listed property now. For most small businesses, the big one is with the automobile, remembering that there might be more kind of limitations on the automobile because the IRS is going to be skeptical that you're not that the automobile is being abused. That in, the, in other words, the automobile is being used possibly for personal use rather than business use with like luxury automobiles or other kind of listed property. And especially with these accelerated depreciations, you would see why the tax code would say, hey, look, we already kind of bent things out of whack with this accelerated depreciation thing. And now people might be abusing it with these automobiles and now they set limits on that. All right, so that's the general idea. So now, do passenger automobiles limits apply? That's the question. Obviously, we would like them not to apply because we would like to be able to deduct as much as soon as possible. And the passenger automobile limits would limit the amount that we can deduct. Now, remember, when we think about the automobile, your questions are, am I gonna take the, the actual method or am I gonna take the mileage method? And you have to consider both the current year as well as future years because there's gonna be some, some non-ability to switch between one method and the other as we've discussed in prior presentations. If you're taking the actual method, then you might have to deal with the depreciation thing, which could be a significant part of the actual method and when dealing with depreciation that's when you could run into the, the upfront depreciations of the 179 deduction special depreciation and the use of makers uh, depreciation those things which might be limited because it's an automobile okay so the depreciation deduction including the section 179 deduction and special depreciation allowance you can claim for a passenger automobile defined earlier each year is limited. So this section describes the maximum depreciation deduction amounts for 2023 and explains how to deduct after the recovery period, the unrecovered basis of your property that results from applying the passenger automobile limits. So in other words, if you have the automobile limits on, you're probably not gonna be able to deduct as much upfront but that doesn't mean that you completely lose the deduction because these deductions you'll recall are basically timing differences so you would think over the life of the property you would get the same amount of deduction it's a matter of when uh you would get that deduction of course we would typically like to get the deduction sooner rather than later so exception for leased cars so the passenger automobiles limits generally do not apply to passenger automobile leased or held for leasing by anyone regularly engaged in the business of leasing passenger automobiles. So for information on when you are considered regularly engaged in the business of leasing listed property, including passenger automobiles, see exception for leased property. So that would be a specific industry uh, kind of exception. You can see how some people might try to manipulate that kind of thing and, and say that that they fall into that category but obviously if you're gonna if you're gonna say that you're in that category you want to make sure that you're in compliance because that's something that you would think might be subject uh, to a red flag or, or an audit kind of situation so you want to make sure you have the backup and the, the paperwork for that to support that position if you take that position maximum depreciation deduction the passenger automobile limits are the maximum depreciation amounts you can deduct for a passenger automobile they are based on the date you placed the automobile in service passenger automobiles the maximum deduction amounts for most passenger automobiles are shown in the in the following table all right so here we have it maximum depreciation deduction for passenger automobiles including trucks and vans acquired after september 27 2017 and placed in service before 2024 so here's the date placed in service we're looking here at uh, 2023 so the first year 20,200 we have our note over here if you elect not to claim any special depreciation allowance or the vehicle is not uh, qualified property, the maximum depreciation deduction is 12200 So in other words, when we're looking at the maximum depreciation deduction, you will, you'll recall there's kind of three things you know, involved here. We've got the normal maker's depreciation, which is an accelerated depreciation, usually double declining balance for like a five-year property, which typically automobiles are. And then we have the 179 deduction, which is an upfront deduction 
uh, and that you might get in the first year, and then and then you've got the special depreciation. So when we're talking, looking at the twenty thousand two hundred, I believe we're looking at all of those kind of combined together, which leads to our footnote here. Uh, if you elect not to claim any special depreciation allowance or the vehicle is not qualified property, the maximum depreciation deduction is twelve thousand two hundred. Okay, so then the second year, the third year and the fourth year and so on. So maximum depreciation deduction for passenger automobiles, including trucks and vans acquired before September 28, 2017 and placed in service before 2020. All right, so maximum depreciation deduction for passenger automobiles placed in service before 2018. Okay, caution. So if your business investment use of the automobiles is less than 100%, you must reduce the maximum deduction amount by multiplying the maximum amount by the path, by the percent of business investment use determined on the annual basis during the tax year. So in other words, if we have the car that we're using for our business, if it's 100% used for the business, then those are the maximum amounts that we would have. But many times especially for small businesses we have the car that we might be using possibly for part personal and part business purposes well in that case would we depreciate it we can only depreciate the portion of the property that is for business how can we find out what that is we might use the mileage calculation meaning the the business miles that we're calculating compared to the total miles that we drive if that comes out to 80 percent for example we would say that 80 percent of the automobile is uh business related and then and then that would have of course an impact on our uh depreciation calculation so if you have a short tax year you must reduce the maximum deduction amount by multiplying the maximum amount by a fraction the numerator of the fraction is the number of months and uh, and partial months in the short tax year and the denominator is 12. example on april 15 2023 you bought and placed in service a new car for fourteen thousand five hundred dollars you use the car only in your business you file your tax return based on the calendar year you do not elect a section 179 deduction and elected not to claim any special depreciation allowance for the five-year property so we're going to eliminate the complications of the 179 and special taking them out focusing then on the maker's depreciation so under makers a car is five-year property so that's going to be five-year property uh, because you placed your car in service on april 15th and used it only for business you use the percentage in table a1 to figure your maker's depreciation on the car you multiply the fourteen thousand five hundred a dollar unadjusted basis of the car by 0.2 to get your maker's depreciation of two thousand nine hundred dollars for 2023 this two thousand nine hundred dollars is below the maximum depreciation deduction of twelve thousand two hundred <clears throat> so we, we so the, the the threshold that they put on the books is basically a maximum of the twelve thousand two hundred we calculated our maker's depreciation on our automobile and we came out to our normal five-year maker's calculation which is under that cap of twelve thousand two hundred so therefore you would think you'd get the two thousand nine hundred and that would be just normal maker's calculation for that one so the passenger automobile placed in service you can deduct the full two thousand nine hundred depreciation worksheet for passenger automobiles so you can use the following worksheet to figure your depreciation deduction using the percentage tables then use the information from this worksheet to prepare form 4562 so here's the depreciation worksheet for passenger automobiles part number one line one you've got the maker system the gds or ads we've got the property class date placed in service recovery period method and uh, convention depreciation rate maximum depreciation deduction for this year from the appropriate table business investment use percent and the multiply line seven by line eight this is your adjusted maximum depreciation deduction section 179 deduction claimed this year not more than line nine enter zero if this is not the year you place the car in service note 
Uh, if line 10 is equal to line 9, stop here. Your combined section 179 and depreciation deduction, including your special depreciation allowance, is limited to the amount on line 9. If line 10 is less than line 9, complete part 2. So here's part 2, continuing on. Subtract line 10 from line 9. This is the limit on the amount you can deduct for depreciation, including any special depreciation allowance. Uh, cost or other basis reduced by any alternate uh, alternative motor vehicle credit or credit for electric vehicles and then multiply line 12 by line 8 this is your business investment cost and then we have the section 179 deduction claimed in the year you place the car in service subtract line 14 from 13 this is your tentative basis for the depreciation multiply line 15 by the applicable percentage if the special depreciation allowance applies this is your special depreciation allowance enter zero if this is not the year you place the car in service the car is not qualified for property or you elected not to claim a special depreciation note if line 16 is equal to line 11 stop here your depreciation deduction including your special depreciation allowance is limited to the amount of line 11 if line 16 is less than line 11 complete part three part number three Subtract line 16 from line 11. This is the limit on the amount you can deduct for maker's depreciation. Subtract line 16 from line 15. This is your basis for depreciation. Multiply line 18 by line 6. This is your tentative maker's depreciation deduction. And enter the lesser of line 17 or line 19. This is your maker's depreciation deduction. It's very straightforward. Uh, calculation here so hope everyone has that visualized in their mind but if you walk through that it makes sense step by step but realize also of course software is useful to help us out with these step-by-step -step calculations allowing us to do the data input but we have to have an idea of what we're doing to do the data input and then we would like to basically deconstruct what the software is calculating have a general concept of these calculation concepts so that we can explain what's happening to others so that we can make sure the data input is correct and so that we can properly plan when making purchases in the future for example deductions after the recovery period if the depreciation deductions for your automobile are reduced under the passenger automobile limits you will have unrecovered basis in your automobile at the end of the recovery period so quick example here let's say we purchased a fifty thousand dollar car this time what we would like to do is be able to expense it all up front because that would one be the easy thing to do and two give us the largest amount of deduction up front utilizing all the potential energy all the potential deduction up front but the tax code lining up or in accordance with general accrual accounting concepts forces us to put it on the books as an asset and then depreciate it over its useful life so for now let's eliminate the 179 deduction and the special depreciation just looking at the maker's depreciation which is similar to normal accounting concepts using basically a double declining balance method the idea would be well we're only going to get a portion of the depreciation up front well, that doesn't mean that we're not going to be able to depreciate the rest of it usually because we can then keep on depreciating it over its useful life and the property would have been fully depreciated at the end of its useful life which would be five to six years because the first and last year have a half year convention so it's actually going to span over like six tax years you would think if it was five year property we would have fully consumed the basis of of the property at that point and gotten the max amount of the deduction but if auto limits apply, then we're going to calculate what we should be recording as depreciation, but then there's a cap on it. And if they cap it each year for five years, that means that after the end of five years, which is usually the recovery period, it still has unrecovered basis. We still have a, we still have a, a basis in it. So, so what do we do with that at that point in time? Do we keep on depreciating it because now we're past the time frame of depreciation because they capped us uh, from being able to depreciate under the normal concept all right so that's where we're at so if you continue to use the automobile for business you can deduct that unrecovered basis after the recovery period ends so you can claim a depreciation deduction in each succeeding tax year until you recover your full basis in the car 
So that would make sense, right? So now you're like, well, you totally messed up my depreciation calculation for double declining balance by putting a cap on it, which resulted in me having more basis at the end of the five-year time frame. And then the question is, well, what do we do? We get to keep on getting the depreciation after that point. All right, the maximum amount you can deduct each year is determined by the date you place the car in service and your business investment use percentage, the maximum depreciation deduction earlier. So unrecovered basis and the cost of other or, or other basis uh, of the passenger automobile reduced by any clean fuel vehicle deduction, electric vehicle credit, depreciation, and section 179 deductions that would have been allowable if you had used the car 100% for business and investment use and the passenger automobile limit, uh, limits had not applied. All right, caution. You cannot claim a depreciation deduction for a listed property other than passenger automobiles after the recovery period ends. So obviously, hopefully tax software can kind of help us with some of these calculations, but we have to make sure that we have the property listed properly and be able to understand the rules to, to check on the software. So there is no unrecovered basis at the end of the recovery period because you are considered to have used this property 100% for business and investment purposes during all of the recovery period. Let's look at an example. In May 2017, you bought and placed in service a car costing $31,500. The car was five-year property under uh, GDS Makers. That's the normal depreciation method that we would use, five-year property makers. So you did not elect a 179 deduction and elected not to claim any special depreciation allowance for the five-year property. So we're going to eliminate the 179 deduction and special depreciation, focusing just on makers depreciation for this example. So you use the car exclusively for business. By the way, if you do, we're able to get a 179 deduction and special depreciation even those those might be limited that's likely that it's going to it's going to reduce your basis substantially so that you still might basically depreciate the full amount of the car within the recovery period right uh so that's why we will eliminate those and show you show you this situation where you still could have basis after the recovery period all right you use the car exclusively for business during the recovery period. So we're not going to deal with this personal versus business in this example because that's not our point of focus. You figure your depreciation as follows. Okay, so here's the table. 2017, the, the table says we get 20% depreciation. That would be $6,300, but there's a limit. So they capped us at only 3160 Notice that we weren't capped before in the prior example because it was a $12,000 car. Now we have a higher dollar value car, which of course means that the cap is going into play. So they limited the amount that we can depreciate. The next year we have, this is the percent depreciation, but and that comes out to 10,080, but they capped it. So we're only allowed 5,100. Next year, we would have got 6,000, but they capped it. So we're only allowed that much. Same thing all the way through. So that means that we only depreciated uh, 16,935 over the one, two, three, four, five, six years. It's five year property, first and last year being the half year convention. Therefore, you would think it would be fully depreciated after the six year period if they didn't cap us, meaning the total cost we should get benefit of, of depreciation, 31,500. But we still have a basis in the property right now because we only depreciated the 16,935. The basis in the property would be the 31,500 minus the 16,935, you would think. Okay, so at the end of 2022, you had an unrecovered basis of 14,565. That's the 31,500 cost minus the 16,935. So if in 2023 and later years, you continue to use the car 100% for business, you can deduct each year the lesser of 1,875 or your remaining recovery basis. So if your business use for the car had been less than 100% during any year, your depreciation deduction would have been less than the maximum amount allowable for that year. However, in figuring your unrecovered basis in the car, you would still reduce your basis by the maximum amount allowable as if the basis uh, base uh, as if the business uh, use had been a hundred percent. So for example, 
if you had used the car 60% for business instead of 100%, your allowable depreciation deduction would have been 8739 which is the 14565 times the 60%. So, uh, but you would still have to reduce your basis by 14565 to determine your unrecovered basis.